Hey everybody, welcome to Lead Guitar Workshop. Today I want to talk about ideas on how to solo, right? That's a big one. That's a big question. You come across a backing track, you're jamming with a friend, you're writing a new song, you're jamming along with something uh, that you know you want to play a solo. Sound good. So what do we do? How do we get there? Um, for me, there's two process. First, you have to be a musician and get that, those questions and answers in the door. And then a guitar player. How do we put all of those decisions on our instrument? To answer the music questions, um, the first thing, you can be very simple. You don't have to have a PhD to get this stuff done. A lot of our heroes certainly don't, um, but they get, the, uh, they get the job done. So let's say we had a song um, simply G, D, E minor to C. The first thing you want to do is find the main chord. Again, not necessarily the key or the mode, not, not even that far. What's the main one of those four? So if you played through it, you most likely would want to end on the G chord. Uh, to me, that tells me that's the chord. That's the other ones are revolving around it. Once you find the chord, you match a scale to it. This is what I call the global approach as a musician. You want to find one scale that will do everything. Uh, in this case, the pentatonic is the best choice because it's so forgiving. Um, so a G major pentatonic for the G major chord that's in the G major chord progression. We'll talk about all the guitar stuff in a moment. Again, we're making all our musical decisions first. So we have a G major pentatonic. That's the global approach. You could also, um, and as a musician, we call play the changes. And that's when you match a scale, a sound, an idea, your note choices, so forth, with each individual chord of a chord progression. Um, much more demanding on the mind, on the ideas and stuff, but really rewarding. It really, it individually directs to, and talks to each chord uh, versus a global, hey everybody, approach of your solo. Again, there's no right or wrong, just options. So in that case, you match a scale per chord. G major chord, G major pentatonic. Uh, D major chord, D major pentatonic. E minor chord, E minor pentatonic. C major chord, C major pentatonic. From there, you can, um, uh, if you sum that stuff together, uh, the different pentatonics for the chords, you would actually end up with the seven notes of the key that they're from. Now looking at this song, G, D, E minor to C, uh, you would probably, with a little detective work, see that it's the key of G, right? So it goes one chord, five chord, six minor to the four chord. Um, once you do that, you can play the seven note version of the scale, and that's playing globally, I think, in a modal way. Um, not modal in the vamping on two chords for 20 minutes kind of thing, but just kind of playing diatonically, really is what that is, with the half steps. With the seven note scale, you get the half steps in there. Uh, so you would play a G major scale, also in the mode world known as G Ionian, and you could think just like that, and that's playing globally. Uh, the benefit of playing globally is you can use all of your effort to make a good melody, to listen to what you're playing, reacting to it, reacting to your band. You can put all of your focus in your choices of your notes, um, not constantly following notes, moving with the chords and stuff. Um, but the playing with the changes directly squeezes the notes out of each chord. Um, it's so good to do this once you get used to it. And really all of our heroes end up doing it, whether they even know it or not. It just sounds right to them. Um, so if you're playing the seven note scale, the beautiful thing about this is it contains seven notes of the key. All those seven notes created all the chords in that key. So the seven note scale has access to all the chord tones for all the chord in that key. Um, you can use your chord shapes to help kind of land on them and move them around. Um, but you can also just think of like the root notes within the scale and that will actually kind of theoretically change the mode as you move through the chords. You don't even have to really do beyond that, it'll happen automatically. Uh, the other thing that people do a lot is thinking of the arpeggios, using the individual notes of each of the chords um, to play, really as a three note scale, if you will. Um, you can, um, uh, and it's, really, it's a really good way because you're directly playing the notes of the chord. This is a, a very tried and true way uh, using the arpeggios. Now again, the arpeggios really just means the notes of the chord. Um, I don't have to play repeated um, arpeggio figures for that uh, idea to be employed. Okay, uh, let's talk about the guitar stuff, and we'll get this looped up, and I'll walk, I'll play through the different options for you. Um, on the guitar, 
Rock and roll rule is one of my number one things that I show students. Uh, what does this mean? Well, of course it means that. Uh, but what it means for us as guitar players is on pattern one of the pentatonics. This pattern you know. There's 12 of them, one for each key, right? Um, for the longest time, I only thought of like this particular one as A minor based on this first finger. But it is also equally C major because of this note. So if I start and stop from the, what's called the relative minor, the A, I can lean it to sound like A minor. If I emphasize the C notes in the scale, the relative majors, uh, I can bring out the C major sound all within pattern one. So what I'll do is first, we'll, um, if we had a song, let's pick a song. Let's do um, G, D, E minor, C. Right, super common song. Um, and we said earlier, and that that G major chord. So that was the main pentatonic. So I'm gonna find G major first. If I put my pinky on the G, that puts pattern one as the open pattern. Or I can play it equally up on the 12th fret. So I'll do that as well. Um, when we play the changes with the pentatonics, I'll probably start with pattern one just to show you that for G major, it's in the open or 12th fret. Uh, for D major, you'd put the pinky on the, uh, the 10th fret and the 7th fret. It looks like B minor, but it's also D major. Uh, when the song goes to E minor, that's the same as G. So it actually literally shares the same scale. So you can go back to the first one you did, uh, which looked like G major. It's also E minor. And then lastly, over the C chord, that would be uh, putting pattern one here with the pinky on the 8th fret C, first finger on the 5th fret, and that would be C major. We'll try that. From there, once we go to the modes, we'll play globally. Uh, maybe I'll use, just for an example, uh, pattern two of the modes. Uh, this is all the notes in the key of G major. I just call this pattern two. It's the same as the pentatonics of the key we were in. You just fill them in with the two half steps. Um, from here, I can just use my ear and just let it flow and move it around that way. Um, I can also land on each note of the chord changes as we play, and that'll be kind of playing the changes with even in the same scale. After that, I will also show arpeggios, uh, meaning let's say if we take some of these top three strings uh, from these things. And you can check some other videos we have on the channel about chord inversions that'll help you navigate some of these. So I have these three on top for G, what looks like my old school D for the D chord. I have this A form of a C chord here. And I'll also use this E minor shape, uh, and I'll play those as well. I forgot to mention earlier on the pentatonics, uh, sometimes if you're just moving pattern one, it sounds like when you first learned bar chords, right? And you're sliding all over. So once you get crafty, playing in the changes with pentatonics uh, can be really fun but tricky. You have to see where the patterns change but sit on top of one another. Um, for instance, if I was up here on pattern one for the G major, it's also the same one for E minor. Right, uh, But in this same 12th to 15th fret, when we need one for D major, this would end up being pattern three. Right, If I put the rock and roll rule here on the 7th to 10th frets, that puts pattern two between 10 and 12, uh, and finally pattern three between 12 and 14. Uh, for the C major chord, uh, same idea if I had to navigate to figure out what pattern is up here. That would put uh, pattern one on the fifth and eighth frets, pattern two on eight to 10, pattern three is now on 10 to 12, so that puts pattern four at the 12th fret for C major. All right, so let's check that out. I'm gonna set up a loop and um, we'll get that going. Let me, I have my beat buddy here, so let me uh, start that up. I have it set to 80 beats a minute. We'll get that groove going for a second. And let me put some acoustic guitar down. Okay. Let me add some bass.
Okay. So let's say we go back to the first thing we talked about. Just G major pentatonic, just pattern one. Here's what it sounds like. sound, especially when the root's on the G string, you get all those sweet bends. Alright, so let's play the changes with the pentatonics. I'm going to keep them all right here, like we talked about earlier. So I'm going to do pattern 1 for the G, um, and I'll do pattern 3 for the D, and pattern 4 for the C. Alright, ready? 1, 2, 3, pattern 1. Pattern three. Pattern one again for the E minor. Now pattern four. Start over. Pattern one, three. Back to pattern one. Pattern four. Again, one. Three. One. Really cool. Uh, let's bring it back here. I mentioned down here I was going to do pattern two down here. This is a common place people think of G major, but it's just pattern two for the modes. So if I just play the scale, like. It really all kind of works nicely. You can just kind of follow your ear, right? thinking this is the general mood of the scale at this point, but let me try to add the roots in. So if I'd start with each one of the root, G, D, E, C, G. There's the D, here comes E. G, D, E, C. All right, very cool. Now if I just use the arpeggios, um, I'm just going to outline them individually, so I don't want to hold them down like chords. I'm thinking solo, right? Three note scales. Here we go. Ready? Three, four. There's the G, D, E minor, C. Right, you don't have to play every note all the time in order. G, D, E minor. Right? Once you can do this as a musician, then you need to do it on your instrument. It takes a long time to get comfortable with all the ideas. I blend them all together. A little arpeggio. Pentasonic thinking. There's the C major. Here's G. D. E minor. Right? So you can just keep going for days on this stuff. It's really fun. Oh, we need some drum fills. Drummer.
The funny thing is when you start looking at it and analyzing it really deeply, it all ends up being the same information. Scales, chords, arpeggios, modes, pentatonics, they're all the same information. Sometimes it's just a matter of what notes you're not using versus the ones you are using. Um, with all of this, it's very important to keep track of the chords in your brain as you're soloing. That's what really makes it shine. Um, not only will you play the changes uh, correctly and keep up with them, you'll not only play them in time, but you'll even be able to anticipate the changes and it sounds so good. Uh, it's a very advanced idea, but really uh, it pays off in the end. Uh, so one of the reasons, uh, this is uh, because of the backing tracks here at Lead Guitar uh, Workshop, we highlight the chords to help you with this process. Uh, that's been such the, uh, one of the things I've loved about them, is having this ability for students to follow it um, and keep track of them, help train their brain and their ear, their hands, to keep everything in motion. All right, well, I hope this helped. Thank you so much. Uh, again, please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. If you are, thank you so much for watching and listening. Um, hit the notification bell. Check out LeeGuitarWorkshop.com. Uh, we'll be having a lot of um, new stuff coming out uh, in the new year. So thank you so much. Rock and roll, baby.